So today we're going to be talking about power supplies and that's because I've bought a new one. Well, these are USB adapters, aren't they? Wall plugs, as you'd call them. So I bought a new one um, and it was because I got a new phone. I got one of these. This is a Xiaomi Mi 5 uh, and it's got Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 on it. Now, I bought it because it was quite a cheap Chinese phone and um, it matched the specs of phones about £500, but for you know, half the price or whatever. So I bought one of those, but my power supplies just won't deliver enough current for it really. Well, I mean, it charges well, but it's meant to be able to get zero to 80% in half an hour with Qualcomm Quick Charging 3. Now we'll get onto what Qualcomm Quick Charging 3 is. It's like a tongue twister. Um, but for now, I just wanted to talk about the power supplies that I currently have. Now this is the one for my old phone. It's an HTC charger. Uh, and I thought it was pretty neat actually. Let's have a look, Let's see if I can focus in on that so you can read it. You may be able to read that, I can't really tell. Uh, but so it's an HTC charger. It feels like it's sort of quality, but <laughs> upon reading it, I realized actually it's only got a one amp output. And I've been using this for my phone to charge it uh, for a long time. And it doesn't work with my new phone. In fact, I can demonstrate it. If I just pull over this plug set here, We'll plug this in. Now, again, it works with my normal phone or my old phone very well. And we will plug in a USB type C cable. That's what this one, this phone comes with. One of these, uh, I don't, it's not going to be in focus. And it exhibits some very strange behavior. So the phone will start to try and charge. We're on 15% at the moment and you'll see it's blinking on and off. You could probably hear it. And so it definitely doesn't like trying to charge from this HTC charger, but it works with everything else. So there's something going on there and I'm not quite sure what it is, but we're gonna try and figure it out or at least discuss what it might be. So we're gonna get rid of this one for now and have a look at the other ones I've got. So this one here is a, a Maplin charger. This is, uh, what is it? It's a two, two output, uh, 1.5, 1.05 amp uh, per USB or 2.1 amps for a single USB. So it's rated at 2.1 amps for the entire device. Now this one will charge the phone just fine. And then we've got some other ones. This one's a like super cheap one I got from, from eBay probably. And this one is a one amp uh, five volt single output charger or power supply. And this one here is a Qualcomm Quick Charge 2 charger. And this came with the phone, with the Xiaomi phone. And interestingly, it can do five volts at 2.5 amps, nine volts at two amps, and 12 volts at 1.5 amps. And I thought, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me. And so I decided to look up what Qualcomm Quick Charging was. Now, I'm gonna do some drawing now. Now, if you've ever played around with sort of USB charging stuff before, you'll know that you'll have your USB. Let's, I'm gonna just do a very crappy drawing of USB. So this is USB sitting at an awkward angle. So this is your five volts and this is your ground. Now you can just take those and power your device. Um, but on the, so you take it from here. So this is where your USB cable is coming out of. Uh, and so this is where your power and ground are going into the device. So the device is over here. Now you can just have the five volt and the ground and then that will be limited to by, by whatever the, 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 the device is limiting it to. So if it detects nothing on the central pins here, which is D plus and D minus. Those are your data lines. If it detects nothing connected there or no signal of any kind on those, it will usually draw its default amount. Now, most of the time these days, that's gonna be 500 milliamps, but it may try and draw more and just watch for the voltage to drop on the five volt line, which is what some of the smart uh, devices do like AI power or QI power and that kind of thing. 
But on lots of devices, you'll find that the D plus and the D minus expect to see some kind of resistance on those two lines, either individually or connected together. So they might expect to see a resistance between D plus and D minus, or expect to see resistance on D plus and a different resistance on D minus. Now in Apple devices, you'll see something like this, which would be your D plus, your D minus, oops, D minus, uh, and this would have a resistor there. Uh, is that, no, that's not quite right. Uh, so yeah, let's do it properly. So a resistor here, and that would go to five volts. That's going to the D plus, and then that one would go to ground. So just try and ignore the, the poor drawing. And then again, you would have the same thing here, another resistor there going to five volts, and then another one going to ground. And that's, so it's a resistor divider, and you're gonna give this one a, a separate voltage. So it might be that um, this is, I don't know, two volts, and this is 1.85 volts. Whatever the, the normal uh, iPhone thing is, that's the kind of thing you would expect to see. Now in other devices, you're gonna have D plus and D minus. In, when I say devices, I mean um, these USB chargers. You might just have these connected directly like that. In these Qualcomm quick charge devices, we have something completely different. Now, this is one of them here. So this is an Orky uh, Powerall 3 port USB wall charger, quick charge 3 PA, what, all of this junk here, but actually it's just a quick charge 3 device. And it's got one quick charge 3 to port, which is the orange one there. And it's got two AI power ports. Now let's just open this up. I don't have a knife with me, do I? No, we're gonna have to just tear it. There we go. Now this, I'm not gonna take this apart because it cost me about 22 pounds, so I wanna use it. There we go, so let's see what we get in here. User manual, that might be worthwhile looking at. Um, something. And then the actual charger itself and a micro USB cable, we don't need any of those. So this is the actual charger itself. Have we got anything written on here? Yeah, in horrendous black writing that I don't imagine you'll be able to read, but I can read it out for you. So we've got, um, it says, I could probably focus on it, let's see. That's about as good as it's gonna get. So it says, uh, AC 240 volts up to 1.2 amps max. So this is, uh, how many watts was this? It was something like 50 watt power supply. So it can output five volts at 4.8 amps or uh, 2.4 max each. That's on the AI power slots. So that's these two green ones here. And then on the uh, Quick Charge 3 one, it can output DC 3.6 to 6.5 at three amps or 6.5 to nine volts at two amps, nine volts to 12 volts at 1.5 amps. Now, how does it do that? Well, Qualcomm have developed a protocol for this. Uh, so they've got um, a chip that controls this. And what it does is it, it demands the voltage from the, the device itself, from the phone, it demands the voltage uh, to be delivered from the device. So if this is looking to charge at quick charge three, it might demand a higher voltage and uh, an amperage. I don't know what the protocol is exactly. It's not all that easy to find. I think there's a data sheet that I didn't really understand, but um, I think it's really interesting, the uh, charging technology that's in this. It just looks like your standard USB, power, uh, USB adapter, but actually it's able to deliver varying voltages, which is really cool. Uh, varying voltages that you want rather than ones that you don't, which I often find with the cheaper supplies. So what I'm gonna do, uh, just as a little quick test, we're gonna plug it in and uh, see what I can get from, what is that? Uh, we're on 15% there. I'm not gonna turn the device off, I'm just gonna leave it on and then I'll come back in half an hour. They stated on um, the Qualcomm website that in half an hour using 
the orange port, we should be able to get up to 80%. Now, I don't know whether that's when the device is switched off or not, but we're going to give it a go and plug it in. And then I'll be back in half an hour's time. Right, so it's been about half an hour. So let's have a look what we've got. I haven't touched the phone. Um, I've just left it as it is. It may be that the stated amount is actually when the device is turned off, which seems like it's likely. I know from a marketing perspective, that's certainly what you'd do. So uh, we are on 56% charged. So not the 80% that it stated, but I think, again, that is likely to be the stated amount if the device is powered off for, for getting from zero to 80% in half an hour. But that is what, a good, what, 15, so it's on 55, so it's 30, 40% in, um, in half an hour. That isn't bad. I think I'm quite happy with that. I think if I was in a desperate situation where I needed to charge it up for half an hour, I would switch it off. Now, the reason I did this video, we can move that out of the way, I still need to charge it up, um, was to discuss power supplies and the fact that really you get what you pay for. So this Maplin power supply, which is really good, um, it has a very stable voltage. Um, it kicks out uh, a little bit under five volts at full, um, full like two amps or whatever. Uh, so it's not perfect. I've got another two amp power supply that kicks out 5.2 at two amps, which is better, but this one was about six pounds so um you know it's not too bad this one <laughs> was one pound 99 delivered and it's a, a one amp uh, usb power supply which kicks out about five volts a little bit under sometimes at at uh, one amp so not great and uh, this very disappointing htc one but i guess this one was designed for the phone so it could probably only charge at one amp so uh you do get what you pay for it. It's really interesting to sort of look at these, how these devices are changing with our power supply needs. So this, uh, this phone has, I think it's around a 3000 milliamp hour battery inside. So it, to charge it up quickly enough, you do need a good power supply. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on power supplies. Um, if you've come across any really good ones and, um, if you know any secrets of the Qualcomm protocol, that'd be really good to know.